everyone. A very uh, warm welcome to all of you and a pleasant early evening. I hope you all are doing well and safe. Your family, all your friends are doing well and safe at home. Uh, even as we are unlocking and uh, some of us are getting back uh, to business, uh, the road ahead is not uh is 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 a, is a little difficult and i hope all of you are 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 treading that with safety so um it is with great pleasure that i present to you the first in our series of meet with uh, digital thinkers fireside chat wherein we showcase stories of digital leaders transforming businesses using technology so before i actually get uh, the uh, the leaders the digital leader to to talk about his journey let me just take a minute to set the context of what we are looking at today in a, in the session so you know as businesses navigate uh, through the uncertainty to Day, how fast and how well they recover will be determined by the ability to be agile and quickly respond to the dynamically changing requirements. So needless to say that cloud has been a key pillar in ensuring business continuity and adapting to the uncertainty. And if the data, uh, the, the recent data is anything to go by, we are already seeing the growing traction in the rising cloud adoption. Um, just to give you uh, a number from IDC, uh, the IDC study states that the COVID-19 impact on IT spending survey, uh, as a result of the spread of the pandemic, 64% of the organizations in India are expected to increase demand for cloud computing while 56% growth for cloud software to support the new normal is, is being seen. So one area where cloud is really pushing the threshold for speed, agility, and performance boundaries is collaboration. And today, more than ever, the need for collaboration is crucial to ensure zero disruption to business. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I would like to uh, ask Venu, uh, Venu, if you can play a short video uh, showcasing how Google is helping organizations collaborate during these unprecedented times. Sure, Shipra, let's to do that. Wow. Next Friday to pitch. On tomorrow. how uh, G Suite is helping organizations uh, push the boundaries of the collaboration to empower business transformation. Um, now let's see how one organization is actually using G Suite to re redefine the boundaries of what cloud can help achieve. And we are here talking of DB Corp, uh, which is also known as the Danik Bhaskar Group. Everyone, uh, everyone is aware, uh, you know, very well knows uh, this, this media group. It is in fact India's largest newspaper group with 66 editions published in four languages and trusted by more than four crore readers across 12 states. So that's huge operation. And the tsunami of change in the media industry required uh, the transition to real-time news delivery, developing and executing new strategies around engaging customers and building revenues. 
So to talk about how real-time collaboration on cloud is helping DB Corp enable all of that, I have the privilege uh, to have with me Mr. R.D. Bhatnagar, CTO of uh, DB Corp. Uh, Mr. Bhatnagar has over 39 years of experience in print and production and IT with leading corporates in India. His focus is on keeping technology relevant to the business and its future, and this includes newspaper technology and IT. Uh, in fact, he has been responsible for introducing many print innovations in the industry. And to take forward uh, the discussion and to understand DB Corp's cloud journey, I would like to invite Priya Darshi Mohapatra, Director of Google, Google Cloud India, uh, Priyadarshi, or Priyo as he prefers to be called, is a veteran of the industry with over two and a half decades of experience in both enterprise and consumer space in India. At Google, Priyo is leading the cloud business for North and East of India. So thanks, uh, Mr. Bhatnagar, and thanks, Priyo, for joining us. So, uh, Priyo, I'll hand it over to you here uh, to take it forward. Shipra, thank you so much for the introduction. And Mr. Bhatnagar, it's my honor and privilege to host you today for this uh, chat. I think all of us, and I think uh, doesn't need any more introduction, Chipra said it very well. All of us know about the Danik Basker Group. A lot of us have grown up reading your publication. You know, your newspaper became like a daily habit for us in the morning when we got up. But also, I know that you are the only Indian publication group among the top three in the world. And, and I think that speaks volumes about where you are. I think the best way for us to Role over this conversation, I think, is to hear from you a little bit about the heritage of the group and really how have you gone about this tremendous growth uh, that DB Corp has seen over the time. Uh, Mr. Patanga, I think uh, you're on mute. Yes. yes. Uh, let me start with thanking uh, uh, you know all my friends to be here. Good evening to all of you. And a lovely introduction by Shipra. And uh, Supriya, I'll just take the first question that you told, and I'm really, very nostalgic about it. Mm. DB Corp actually launched 62 years back in Madhya Pradesh with a single edition. And the journey since then has been eventful even till, till this date. The marquee event actually happened when our group first stepped out of Madhya Pradesh uh, in our foray in Rajasthan from Jaipur. Mm -hmm. And we used a very radical tagline you know, of that campaign which was up Suraj Ugega Paschim Se. And you can imagine the kind of, you know, the uh, whole uh, tagline speaks about. And we created a number of milestones from installing a machine just in 48 hours, which usually takes about 32 days to install and becoming the number one newspaper from day one in Jaipur. So this speaks a volume about, you know, the practice that we would have had in our back end to achieve all this. And we also did many firsts as, uh, you know, uh, it was introduced uh, there, which we did first in the industry, like printing multicolor in language newspapers in 1996, where no other language newspaper ever had any kind of equipment or even thought of printing uh, uh, colors in the newspapers. We were also the first media house to use the internet for the content. I don't know if you remember, we created history when we published a colored picture of Martina Hingis playing a shot in the Wimbledon, captured from the internet, which never showed any graphics. So it was all you know, through scripts that you had to extract these kind of uh, contents from uh, internet in those days. So we were also first in doing a lot of innovations like bringing 3D images in our newspaper, adding fragrance to a newspaper, and, and the list is long. So this entire journey has been very nostalgic to me. I can, I can keep talking about it all evening. So I think uh, you can start asking me uh, more relevant questions now. Well, such, an, such an exciting and I think absolutely awesome journey. I mean, whoever had thought of fragrance in the newspaper, while you know it might sound so easy to download a picture, the time you did download a picture from internet and showed it to the public, I think everybody talked about it. And I still remember it was like, you know, how did they manage it? How did they get the image and where did they get it from? No, yeah. fantastic. Uh, Mr. Patnaga, I'm sure a journey like this, such an exciting journey, wouldn't be without your set of challenges that you would have faced while growing from where you started, uh, you know, in Madhya Pradesh to, you know, literally conquering the country, the world. And I'm sure that in some of this journey that you were challenges that you were facing, technology, legacy applications and all would have slowed you down or at least come in as a temporary hurdle. So I'd like to hear from you. How did you really go about them? How did you surmount some of these challenges? Yes. Uh, 
in fact all the challenges that you know still come across you know our company we take them as opportunities mm -hmm. one the most example the common example that everyone can relate even today is the real time collaboration we we are a multi geography company as you know and we have close to about 70 different centers and three languages so the most important i'm stressing upon the three languages that we have and we have to sort of you know have a unified communications with all of them so any report that got generated from a corporate like from md's office the very first thing that happened was that it was sent to different uh, 70 different locations so one file got converted into 70 copies and then in 70 different versions because at that moment of time there was not a single version that was available in the company we had all different sites of uh, like 2006 7 8 9 and 16 and all that stuff on the earlier application that we had so 70 copies in 70 different types of or maybe many more versions now whenever a person interacted on those reports and returned it to the md's office or to the corporate office we had 70 more copies coming to us so 70 the original and the 70 new ones coming and then whole battery of people sort of compiling that data and every day our md had to spend about four and a half hours to go through these entire reports like which is which is like an mi mis there were no dashboard at that moment of time and there were no sort of you know a unified uh, single dashboard that came into any device so he had to spend that many hours going through all these reports and this you kept on you know is uh, becoming more and more painful for us because the data itself was not coming from a single point of truth right so this was one of the major uh, pain points that were hurting you know and they were hurting us and we started hunting for solutions the very first collaborative uh, sort of application that was uh, exhibited was by apple they came out with that pages and numbers and and people could also you know one uh, collaborate on one single sheet but you could all imagine you know we were we had to then get into a proprietary environment and the cost of uh, the entire apple environment was too humongous you know at least for our kind of operation that we were there were other alternatives also that, that we evaluated but uh, no one else you know could get the success that we were looking for mm -hmm. it was google for works actually it was known google for works earlier when it came to us uh was offered to us by team computers one of the partners of google i think and who demonstrated to us the real uh, real time collaboration for the first time and that was the starting point for us with google uh so mail of course 83% of the people within our organization were quite conversant with uh, email or gmail which they had as, uh, as a personal personal email so there was no challenge in the uh, change environment at all but rest of the organization organization was absolutely very very comfortable with the existing uh you know application of microsoft that they were using microsoft office but of course you know that microsoft office came with four di different uh, applications like doc was separate and slides was separate and uh, excel was separate and of course uh, powerpoints was separate so they were not uh, what what you can say horizontally stitched together but it was very difficult for us to get them through you know to adopt google sheets because it didn't even offer the very fundamental uh, features like grouping totaling while again go in within rows and columns so it was like you know it was getting rejected all the time but it was team computers i must really put this on record mm -hmm. even when google had didn't have this feature uh, team computers came up with a uh, uh, google scripts and made us manage those google sheets by using those kind of scripts which allowed us grouping of uh, the columns and uh, rows so that also you know gave us some kind of a uh, what you can say and uh, idea that google would definitely come out with these kind of features because this is competing with the other uh, you know large market share holder applications like microsoft and we started rolling it out in the organization so by using the work around what team computers gave us we were able to uh, make the entire organization migrate onto google for works which had email which had sheets which had docs which had slides of course was not that predominantly sort of you know good enough to work but but uh, word and uh, google sheets were definitely very uh, near to what we wanted the real piece was collaborating in real time and all multiple offices should be able to work on that single document which this offered us so this actually was our starting point in google suite so that is how we started our journey with google
fascinating. Uh, Mr. Patna, when I was hearing this story of yours, you know, I I was looking at beyond those product elements, beyond those environments that you spoke about, how that thought process evolved from, you know, why should we get locked down in a proprietary environment? How do we look at an open environment? It was beyond product. It was about getting a lot of people together, collaborating together to finally give something that the organization really needed. And I think this speaks volumes about beyond technology, beyond product, but about a cultural change which happened in the organization. And if Google really helped you, you know, in creating this change, I would really like to hear from you. What's the kind of cultural transformation you saw within the organization after you started using products like Juicy from Google? Well, you rightly said that in, in media, uh, for us, just-in-time information is the promise that any media company, you know, has had, and it is one of the prime objectives of a media company. But having a leg legacy systems and riding on, you know, in-prem servers pose major challenges, like having physical servers sized obnoxiously, because the moment you wanted to buy those black boxes or refresh those black boxes, we, we uh, you know, had to think about five years uh, you know, ahead and get the entire capacity installed on day one. So which was, again, a huge cost getting blocked there. That is the commercial part of it. But if you look at operational part of it, uh, there were major challenges. You know, the editorial staff, uh, the field staff yet had to come to the office to have that access of the information that they needed you know, for the final outcome. So what we did, we first tested with a very simple UI uh, for the editorial to facilitate to for the journalists to write their stories right from the field mm -hmm. and submit it right from there. So this was our beginning with our experience with GCP, you know, Google Cloud Platform, where we you know, developed a small application for a mobile, hosted it on GCP, uses some of its cloud components, like we went into serverless computing, all that stuff. And we gave that app to the journalists so that they could you know, take the mobile and write from the field, uh, sort of submit their stories, write the stories there itself and submit the stories to the desk. And you won't imagine the kind of joy these journalists had. It was like a miracle and nobody would have thought that, you know, without carrying a laptop or a diary or a pen, writing the whole story there, and then coming back to the office at five o'clock, rewriting or recomposing the entire story digitally on a computer and then sending it to the system. Even yeah. the person at 11 o'clock when the event is happening is there, you know, at the field, right in the place where the action is happening and writing his notes on his mobile or even speaking. Today, as, as I speak to you about it, we use the voice typing ability of uh, Google app where the journalist, instead of typing on his mobile, can just keep on narrating what he wants. And the, the story comes straight to the newsroom at that very real time. So this was a very exciting experience that the journalist had at that moment of time. Oh, fantastic. I think Shipra also mentioned that, you know, your industry has gone through a tsunami of change. And I think it's been pivot around the speed of delivery. It's not just about the quality of the news and contents, but how do you really deliver it at speed on any device? And I think you summed it up beautifully, how you moved, how you created a cloud application, how the reporters could, you know, report real time. Fantastic. But I'm sure, Mr. Patnagar, in this, the core element of, you know, being extremely fast in responding, speed, agility, flexibility would have played a very, very core part in your decision on how you want to go about it and how you really leverage the power of cloud. And for us, like somebody who provides the crowd solution, we'd love to hear from you. How important were these factors from you and how did you go about that? Absolutely, absolutely. Bang on. The small experience that we had with the editorial now expand, has expanded to uh, migrating all our user consumer facing applications on GCP. Wow. Imagine the amount of work that we do with graphics or very heavy files and photographs, the photographs that come from various agencies and even our photographs, uh, graphers, when they send these pictures are huge. That used to travel on our van, wide area network, and come into our network. And one picture, you know, very large, high resolution picture could be somewhere around 10 MB. And on, on a page, one single page, there would be some 10, 15 page pictures. So that made our entire, uh, you know, the workflow highly loaded with uh, very heavy files. But the moment we went on to GCP, we started using their buckets and we started using, you know, Kubernetes and uh, the kind of uh, other cloud components. Now, today, even a 20 MB picture opens in a flash. So that experience has really given us a great amount of speed. Today, the editorial people also shoot their videos as well as very high resolution pictures on the field. And it gets timely trans uh, transmitted to our newsrooms. The users also not only got the speed, but 
the security and ease of how, you know, or use of the applications or any on any other device today. So we utilize these you know frontliners to file their stories with pictures and videos that were taken uh, taken directly on the website almost instantly today. But we have a moderator in between, so that moderator also works in tandem real time on that stream. So the story from the field comes to the moderator, and I think he just consumes about few seconds to a minute. to just let it pass if everything is all right because we are using a lot of uh yeah, some inbuilt technologies like uh, you know uh, video analytics and uh, and uh, you know uh, the nlp so that it gives us if there is any objectionable word that is being sent by the journalist or if there is any objectionable object within the video or the picture file it is highlighted to us and the, uh, the moderator just immediately just crosses or passes it on so that uh, the Content placed seamlessly on the consumer front. Right. Uh, also, uh, moderating. Ah, okay. So I've told this about moderation. Now, one of the important features that has also helped us is that on a single document, like a single news. Today we have uh, multiple journalists working on the single news. Earlier, it used to be one reporter used to write a story, send it to the next level, and the next level forwarded it to subject matter experts to sort of curate it. But it happens on real time today. so one single document when the reporter starts writing he can invite all help that is required on that one particular document and every every uh, person is actually working on that one single document so you can imagine the amount of time that is saved now no oh, fantastic i, I think mr patna the listening to you again and again is reassuring that we are in a business which is about driving with purpose and i think like it is rightly said it's not just about technology it's how you use technology it sits so closely with human interaction because the example you just gave it doesn't make human beings redundant but actually makes them more effective in terms of the yeah. time save in the way they can collaborate i mean absolutely awesome it, it brings me to another point and changing a track a little bit from the technology side i'm sure that once you have adopted the technology and really made the business more effective the business leaders would be looking at some key business metrics and they would be trying to evaluate a situation which was in your earlier environment of legacy to how now you have empowered the entire business with the new technology new modernization new cloud environment that you have created i would love to hear if you can share with us some real life examples on how some of these business metrics have got impacted sure sure i'm i'm very happy to again share this because i am one of the users of this kind of a component mm -hmm. as informed to you that we have close to about 59 printing presses printing plant which has about 89 different printing presses and you know, and across multiple geographies so using google cloud we have created a number of applications you know that capture real time metrics like sales orders edition release timings print timings entire machine maintenance parameters of all these 89 presses and by using so all users are actually feeding in their uh, relevant data into their relevant columns itself in the relevant fields but at the management level we are able to see oh a real time dashboard of what has happened so the ability of cloud to auto scale also you know has given us uh, uh, a very uh, you can say a profound confidence that cloud is the only way when i say this then i can share one example with you we had conducted a survey on the modi government's performance asking mm -hmm. about 20 questions to public by just sending a small link to them and uh, the response was from the people was unprecedented and we never had that impression that so many people would actually uh, simultaneously respond if it had been you know a single server or a you know uh, a server within our organization it would have crashed immediately we saw that the servers you know started utilizing uh, getting utilized to 100% and it scaled automatically at once and the system was never down and we were so happy that in spite uh, our it team had to do nothing about it it automatically scaled up and the moment the spike started going going down and down and became normal the servers automatically descaled so there was no human intervention required at that moment of time and that was such a fantastic experience any it uh, you know head could have at that moment of time because there were no. that so important uh, event that we were conducting and any crashes that moment of time would have not been tolerated by the management Uh, this is so true, Mr. Bhatnagar. And more and more, if you look at the current context, we are living in such an uncertain, volatile world. We really, and you know, never know what's going to be the next day. And you got to be prepared for situations like this. And I think you brought in the point so well that somewhere, this is not just about technology, but it's about making you relevant in the real world that we are living. 
you know, we can't be always planning for the next day, next day happens sometimes, which takes us totally unaware, like the recent pandemic. And I think the way you have leveraged technology, it really helped you take care of some of those elements. And this brings, I'm, I'm a little bit curious, and this brings me back to the point, your story, I have seen a very clear dimension of the business transformation, the digital transformation, how you've leveraged technology for that. But I'm sure there must be a core element of a cultural transformation also within the organization. I did allude to it before, but I would like to understand a little bit more from you on this cultural transformation angle. And has any Google product really helped you? Like a GC, did it really help you in that? Yeah, of course. See, changing culture, changing technology overnight, buying anything off the shelf is very easy. <laughs> but changing culture in the organization takes humongous amount of efforts, you know. And this effort has to actually come as a uh, top down, like if the promoters and the top leaders are quite uh, sort of, you know, firm on what they need and what the outcomes are, you know, based on certain changes they're doing in technology or any other landscape, it has to be mandated. So one thing that got changed in our organization was real-time accountability. When I say this, mm -hmm. I'm saying it with a lot of, you know, double quotes there. When I say real-time accountability means the moment a mail was sent or a hangout uh, session was done, it was accept expected by the management that a person would respond within the shortest period of time. Today, what happens, like if you receive a WhatsApp from anywhere, we are inclined to sort of answer it almost immediately. So real-time accountability and collaboration was one of the key changes that happened in the organization. It was no more that people could stay on, uh, you know, keep laying on or lying on the email or keep lying on any other document. When a document was shared, like a sheet or a document uh, with uh, the people who were supposed to respond, they knew that somebody was watching them and it was expected them to answer or write their comments immediately as they have seen the document. So we are seeing people, you know, shifting from traditional mailing to real-time communication today. And we use a lot of Hangouts and Chats instead mm -hmm. of email. So we encourage people to use more of Hangouts and Chats rather than email because email a person may just leave unread. But while you're doing a Hangout, he's there with you on the session. And if you are doing it on the chats as well as on your docs, you know that the person is live, uh, alive on the same document. So And COVID has further amplified it. So we are able to do our business as usual, even working from home in the last 70 days. I don't even miss the office now because I'm able to see all my colleagues on the screen. I'm able to work. I'm using the same documents, same dashboards and contributing to the business in the same way as I was doing sitting in my chamber. No, such an amazing thing. And I don't think I'm sure, Mr. Bhatnagar, you never planned for a day like this. When you were trying to create the power of collaboration, communication, you never thought that you want to seamlessly do it from people operating from home. And, and it's such an important point if you look at it, because it's not just about how do we connect the workforce from home, how do they not just collaborate, but how they're productive, how they're really impacting business. And I think your illustration clearly brings forward that point. No, this has been such an amazing story. I mean, every element of it, which is it's a business transformation, technology transformation, and I think no story is complete with what you finally said about the cultural transformation. Uh, and coming from an organization which is such a strong heritage legacy, you started in an old world and transitioned and adapted yourself to move to the new world. Any thoughts that you would like to live with all our audience, peers and colleagues who are right now thinking about, you know, how do they transform their journey? How do they go into cloud? Anything that you would like to share with all of them? See, as I said, uh, uh, this COVID has actually amplified and rather you know, has sent the process of people uh, looking at uh, solutions that can provide them this kind of an agility. Uh, while, see, Zoom and Microsoft Teams and all other uh, companies have also taken huge advantage in promoting their collaborative platforms. Meet was slightly, you know, short of giving some few features like conducting webinars and providing those features. But I'm sure they're coming up with these features uh, now you know, very recently because I think I heard that in another 15 days, uh, they will be giving this uh, features to the, their collaborative platform as well. But let me you know, tell all my friends who are there listening to me, for us, cloud is no more just an option. It is rather the only way to recover fast. The most important thing with the cloud is that it comes with a built-in elementary security and features, which most of the non-savvy organizations, I say, I repeat this, not so savvy IT organizations, will send a, seldom have you know, in their list of human resources that they will have a person looking after data security or IT security or maybe maybe having a person which is, who is very highly qualified in data security and also building applications. So they will not have these kind of human resources. 
so cloud is one area where they it up, you know, gives you that built in confidence and built in security also fundamental security that needs to be deployed so one incident uh, i would also like to elaborate again here uh, and the power of this google cloud and how it saved us last year we had some flash floods in patna and we had to shut down our patna office and the press together and patna prints closed close to about 400000 copies you know the edition is distributed in the city and uh, we were all taken uh, back now how do we now manage because the power is off the roads are cut off the press is off we can't work we immediately within minutes we shifted this entire uh, you know operations of people working uh, to the nearby places like muzaffarpur and bhagalpur and the places nearby and the staff there sitting in bhagalpur and muzaffarpur started producing the patna edition and we came out with patna edition that very next morning it got distributed normally all other editions all other competitors could not distribute the paper the next day only we could produce distribute it because we produced it uh, you know in uh, other offices and also printed it in other uh, presses which were nearby so this could be facilitated only because we had google for work uh, this thing google cloud otherwise we couldn't be able to do it so uh, what a fun, fantastic example i think it covered all the elements of not just speed agility flexibility but how do you really give the content that a customer wants on any device at any point without ever getting disrupted by what's not in your control absolutely but agar i have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation thank you so much for your time and i would have loved to listen to you more and now i'll probably like to ask shifta to take over and tell us you know how do we take it forward from here great thank you so much uh, mr patnagar and thank you priyo so mr patnagar uh, through, throughout these last 20 25 minutes i was hearing with fascination about how uh, your journey through cloud how the company has evolved uh, through this journey from from a, from a from an organization with with a legacy to a truly modern organization uh, you know that is facilitating real time news delivery and thank you priyo for actually bringing out those those important yeah, elements yeah. you know important. that that we really wanted to uh, know about so thank you so much uh, for bringing across the sense of the real business transformation that collaboration on cloud can help achieve you know whether it is making uh, informed decisions with real time data availability or improving response time productivity or operational efficiency So thank you so much, Mr. Patnagar, for your time and for sharing your journey with us so candidly. It will be a huge learning experience uh, for the delegates uh, to take back with them and apply in their respective organizations. And uh, thank you, Priyo, for the wonderful and en enlightening discussion. Yeah.